Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're gonna find the perimeter of this triangle and it's outlined in blue. Hopefully you can see that. So we wanna find the perimeter of this triangle and we're gonna define this triangle by its vertices, which are the endpoints here of the triangle. Okay, so one vertice is located at zero, five. This uh, vertice right here is located at zero, zero, and this vertice is located at negative seven, zero. So again, the goal is to find the perimeter of this triangle. If you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct answer in just one moment, and then of course, I'm gonna walk through the solution step by step. Also, if you need uh, math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. But before I actually show you um, how to solve it, I'm gonna show you the correct answer right now. All right, so the perimeter is approximately 20.6. Now, I don't have actual units here. So in other words, we don't have, uh, you know, these are not in inches or centimeters or millimeters, any sort of um, unit of measure of length. But you need to be aware that perimeter is a measurement of distance or length. But in this particular case, we don't have any specific units, but uh, the perimeter is approximately 20.6. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, if you got this right, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A+, plus, a 100% and multiple stars so you can tell your friends and family that you solved a pretty interesting perimeter problem. I'm pretty sure they'll be very impressed with that knowledge. They'll be like, wow, that's pretty awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into how to solve this problem. But uh, before we even start, let's just make sure you understand what that word perimeter means, okay? So to find the perimeter of anything, you're basically just find the sum total distance around that figure. It could be a triangle, it could be any sort of kind of uh, object or figure. Now, if you're dealing with a circle and you're finding the distance around a circle, that happens to be called the circumference, but effectively it's like the perimeter of a circle, but we wanna find the total distance around the uh, triangle. So just in case you didn't understand what that word perimeter means, that's what it means. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. And the first thing we need to do is to start getting some measurements around this triangle. So this uh, measurement right here should be pretty easy for you to understand if you're pretty familiar with the XY coordinate plane. So these vertices are XY points, okay? It's a little XY point that we can plot on the XY Cartesian plane. Okay, so I'm kind of using some fancy words here. Now this point is also referred to as an ordered pair or a coordinate, but you'll uh, oftentimes hear an ordered, ordered pair. I gotta say that without <laughs> messing that word up ordered pair. So it's a pair and there's a specific order. Okay. The first is the X and the second is the Y. So here's the X axis and here's the Y axis. So zero, zero, of course, is the origin. Zero, five is what? X is zero. There is no movement on X, but there is movement on Y, five. So this is one, two, three, four, five right there. Okay. So you can't do this problem unless you understand um, you know, how to plot points on the XY coordinate pair. But anyways, uh, this is very easy to determine this length and this length. And let's go ahead and take a look at that. We'll talk about this length here in a second, but we're going to need all the lengths of this triangle to determine the perimeter. Okay. So as I just kind of showed you this length of the triangle right here is if we start from X is zero and we're going up to uh, five, on the y-axis, well, this length here is following you. The triangle is on, the, or at least this side of the triangle is on the y-axis, so this is five right here, okay? So knowing that, this distance from here, we start from x is zero and it goes all the way out to x is negative seven. Now, that is the coordinate, negative seven, but the distance is the absolute value of that number, okay? This is seven units in terms of distance. Its location is at negative seven, but the its distance is seven. So you always wanna think of distance in terms of positive units. So this is seven, this is five, so we're almost there. We got two out of three lengths of this triangle. So how do we find this length right here? Well, we're dealing with a right triangle, 
Okay, now why are, why are we dealing with the right triangle? Because when you have the x, y coordinate um, plane, okay, the x and y, they are perpendicular to one another. These axes, uh, y and x, form a 90 degree angle, just to be crystal clear about that, meaning that this is a right triangle, meaning that we can find this length right here, okay, by using this lovely formula right there. Okay, so what is this formula's name or this theorem to be more precise? Well, this is probably one of the most famous theorems in mathematics. There's a ton of them out there, but in terms of uh, those of you out there are taking algebra, geometry, and like high school level math, basically you should know this uh, theorem super well. It's called the Pythagorean theorem, okay? And it basically helps us to find the length of uh, any right triangle. And here we're trying to find the length of the longest side which is called the hypotenuse, and that is side C. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, use the Pythagorean theorem to get this side. Now, we already got this side of the triangle. We got this side, and once we get this side using the Pythagorean theorem, then we can add all these sides up and get the perimeter. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so here is, again, uh, the situation. So A and B of the Pythagorean theorem are the shorter sides um, of the uh, right triangle. Okay, so again, we're dealing with the right triangle. Uh, this could be A, this could be B. It doesn't make a difference. The math will work out. So let's call A is equal to 5 and B is equal to 7. But C is always the length, the longest side of a right triangle, which is the hypotenuse. It's the side opposite of the right triangle. So here, this is always, always the longest side. And then A and B could be this side or this side doesn't make a difference. All right, so now we're just going to uh, do some basic algebra and we're going to plug in our values for A and B, and then we'll solve for C. Okay, again, we're going to call A is equal to 5, and B is equal to 7, and we're going to solve for C, which will be this length right here. All right, so let's go to do that right now. So again, A is equal to 5, B is equal to 7. Here's the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So let's go ahead and plug in our 5 for A, and for B, we'll plug in 7. And so you can see the math right here. So a squared is going to be 5 squared. And b squared is going to be 7 squared is equal to c squared. 5 squared is 5 times 5, or 25. 7 squared is 49, 7 times 7. And so when we add those up, 25 and 49, we get 74 is equal to c squared. How do we solve for c? Well, we simply just take the square root of both sides. So c, okay, this is c squared. When we take the square root of c, uh, c squared, uh, that is equal to C. So we just go into our calculator and take the square root of 74, and it's a decimal, but it's pretty close to 8.6. So we'll say that that side C is approximately 8.6. So that little squiggly symbol is in contrast to this symbol. This symbol means exactly, perfectly. That's what it's equal to. But once you take a de uh, decimal estimation or you just round off your decimal, now you're dealing with an approximation, okay? Which is okay because in this particular case, we're just, you know, trying to calculate the perimeter. And, uh, you know, here we'll use this approximate value for C. So that, again, is 8.6. So now this is very, very easy to do. So this side of the triangle is 8.6. This side is 5. This side is 7. So the perimeter is simply going to be the sum total of the sides, 7, 5, and 8.6. And that is going to be uh, 20.6 exactly, but the perimeter, what we can just say, is effectively approximately 20.6. Okay, so hopefully you understood uh, this problem from the beginning and you didn't need any assistance. You're like, I already got this, Mr. YouTube Math Man. You're not going to try to trick me with your fancy problems. But listen, if you were confused and now you're like, oh, okay, I get it. Well, you know, this is a very typical type of problem. As a matter of fact, if I had to say, you know, with, in terms of difficulty, how difficult this problem would be for the average, let's say, high school or college student, I would say this would be like a, you know, an easy to like medium level problem. Okay, this is certainly not what I would classify as a difficult problem. But if this is difficult for you, well, listen, you obviously need to work on what you need to work on. If you need help with the Pythagorean theorem, geometry or algebra, let me uh, recommend a couple courses to you uh, in my math help program. That would be either pre-algebra, algebra one, or geometry. If you happen to be in algebra two, I have that as well. But if you're at the algebra two level or college algebra level, this should be pretty easy for you to solve. 
Anyways, if this video helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.